Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shelved. Um, I'm your host, Jeremy Meyer, and we've done it. We've made it to an episode two. And I'm, I'm really feeling like after doing this first episode and the second episode, that this is really working. I really feel like I'm, I have a good idea and I'm not wasting my time here. So that's good. I hope everyone is enjoying listening so far. Um, so today we're doing a script that is, I don't want to say special to me, but it's kind of important to me in the sense that this is a script that I heard about when I was younger and it's kind of the prototype for this podcast. It's one of the first times I heard about a script of a movie that never got made. And it was something that as a long time ago, I really wanted to see and just, it never happened. I mean, the movie eventually came out, but it was not the script that we're going to talk about today. And uh, that script, of course, is Resident Evil, written by George Romero, the zombie king himself. Uh, yeah, based on the video game. This movie was supposed to come out in, like, 1998. And, uh, or I think the script was turned in in 1998, which is something I talk about in the episode. And it was uh, turned down by Capcom for being too similar to the game, which I don't understand why anybody says that. Like, Or why would that be a complaint? Isn't the point of adapting something is... You're trying to adapt what it's about, because we all know the Resident Evil movie that came out has nothing to do with the video game. So, uh, but yeah, this was one that was interesting to me. It was one I, I remember hearing about a long time ago in my early days of discovering the internet. I loved reading about a uh, story. Like, I was the type of kid that when I bought a video game, I would sit there and read all of the story stuff that was in, like, the booklet that came in the case, which a lot of kids nowadays probably don't even know what that is, because no games come with that anymore. But yeah, I just any little bit of story I could absorb from a video game, I loved it. So I would often just read on like websites and stuff about Resident Evil because it's one of my all time favorite video games. Like if I had to name you my top three favorite video games, I think I do this in the episode is uh, Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil 2 and Mortal Kombat. Uh, not in that order because Mortal Kombat is higher. Um but yeah, uh, so this was one that I heard about a long time ago. I even saw a, like a fake poster treatment that was just like some eyes in the woods and stuff. And I, I never found the script a long time ago, but there was definitely like snippets of it out there, or like descriptions of what was in the script. And it was years later that I finally found it and then rediscovered it for this podcast. Because I, I think this is a really good script to look at. It's interesting because George Romero, everybody knows, is the king of the zombie movies, made Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, and then all those other sequels we try to forget. And um, this is very reminiscent of those movies, and he would have been the perfect guy to approach in the late 90s for a Resident Evil movie. I think he actually even went on to do a Resident Evil 2 trailer for the video game that was live action and had like zombies and characters from the games. You can probably find it on YouTube. Um, yeah, so I sat down with a buddy of mine, uh, Vinny, who he's a co-worker, but uh, he is like our resident horror fan. Like me and him, we both love horror movies, and he was kind of the perfect person to approach with this script. And um, he's going to appear again. We talk about it in the episode. Uh, there's another script he already has, but there's a, there's a few movies that he's kind of the perfect person to talk to. Um, but I, I really enjoyed this episode. It was nice to sit down and talk to him. Um, I, I wish we went a little more into the script of like, I guess laying it out. I'm still kind of figuring it out in these early episodes. I guess we should more often run down the script and like what it is and like the plot and everything. Uh, we definitely talk about a lot of it, but we could have went more in depth. Like I hope people, I like when I post the mid episodes that tell you what the script is, I hope that people go out and find it and read it, and I'm trying to put together a website so that'll all be easy for everyone to access, but it's just, it's nicer when somebody can follow along, but um, yeah, you know, it's, it is what it is, we're still figuring it out, but uh, I, I really enjoy this episode, I hope you guys also enjoy this episode, this was a, a fun one to do, I look forward to doing more with Vinny, I already have the next one lined up that I think is going to be a lot of fun. And um, I hope you guys enjoy listening and keep coming back. So uh, the, we're going to talk about Resident Evil by... Oh, oh, sorry, dropping my recorder here. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about Resident Evil done by George A. Romero.
first one we went like 45 minutes and then like with my extra recorded intro and shit we did an hour so oh, nice. at, at the end I'll, I'll do the, like on the first episode I did like a uh, separately recorded outro mm-hmm. but I think from now on I'm just going to do it together so if you want to like pimp your Twitter or crypto oh, nice, closet nice, or nice. anything yeah hell yeah alright but uh you were the perfect person to choose for this one because you're probably the biggest horror fan in the office yeah I um I can say I genuinely enjoyed it. I, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like I feel like um, the script that George Romero did kind of had like a more horror feel to yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I almost feel like I have to go back and rewatch the other movies. I but, weirdly it made me want to rewatch them too, and we've yeah. talked about it before. I'm not the biggest fan. Like, I'm, I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. Like, Resident Evil, the, like, the first one and the second one are two of my all-time favorite video games. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know your history with Resident Evil, but I, I know you've played them. Absolutely. I think, you know, I was one of those people who, uh, I, um, I got the PlayStation a little late. Um. Yeah, me too. So, when I did get it, I, um, the first time I played it was at my uncle's, and it was Resident Evil 2 that kind of got me Yeah, sucked the in. second one was the first one I played, too. Right, yeah. And then, um, just... Back when it came out, it was just so much different than anything else, you know. Yeah. Anything else? That's why I feel like when the movie was going to come out and they were going to make it, I was really excited to see if they were really going to kind of have keep that feel where it yeah didn't feel like a normal horror movie, you know. Yeah. Even though it was a game, and um, just just my opinion, I feel like if I would envision what I thought the movie would be like, it'd be closer to what this script was. Exactly. And the script was actually turned down by Capcom because they felt it was too similar to the game, which to me is ridiculous. Because why are you making a video game movie? This is the problem I have with every video game movie that comes out. I can name three that I think are legitimately amazing, and that's the first Mortal Kombat, um, Silent Hill, and I throw Prince of Persia on there because it was fairly faithful. It's not like an amazing movie, but... I, I really like that one. Super so, Mario was really great, too. Oh, yeah, that one. They fucking <laughs> nailed it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Resident Evil, I was super excited when the movie came out. And it was a long... I didn't see it until it came out on, like, VHS back in the day. Because yeah. I think it came out in 2001 was when the first one came out. Yeah. Um, and a friend of mine saw it in theaters, and he was... He he liked it. So he was, like, pimping it up to me and, like, getting really excited about it. And so, like, when I finally watched it, I was just like, what is this? Like, this is not Resident Evil. And for a long time, I still kind of like it. I still like the first three. Mm-hmm. Like, I think they're bad movies, but I think they're bad movies that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. And then from that point on, they, to me, just get worse and worse. Like, the most recent one, Six, was yeah, offensive it, to I, me. I, I started getting lost. Like, I, I almost I can't really differentiate a lot of the older ones because it almost starts to feel like a... I mean, I Four, Five, and it, Six feel like almost the same movie because yeah, they're and, all and, a mess. I don't know what it is. I don't. It's kind of hard to kind of um, touch pulses to like what, what I'm trying to say. But the newer ones just didn't have that horror vibe. No, know? I mean, had, I mean, the first one and the third one to me are the only two that feel like horror movies. Whereas the second, fourth, fifth, and sixth all feel like straight up action films. Right. Right. And I think even in the first one, there's like plenty of Matrix ripoffs where she's like jumping off the walls and stuff. And I just feel like he, Paul W.S. Anderson, who directed all of them, except the th- he didn't direct the third one. He produced it and wrote it, but he didn't direct that one. Um, he Is just... he a Matrix fan? Yeah. Cause, cause it's like it the Matrix. Very clean. Because if like... you watch his movies before The Matrix, they're, they're decent. Like he did, more, he did the first Mortal Kombat as well. He did Soldier, which is a movie that came out in, I think, 94. Eight. Is that the one with Goldberg? No, John it's Claude with Kurt Russell, and it te- technically takes place in the um, Blade Runner universe, which oh, I don't okay. think people okay. know that. And I think it's a great movie. Um, but then, yeah, The Matrix came out, and all of his movies just, like, he wanted to make The Matrix. And... Yeah, and you kind of get that vibe, and that's the thing. It's kind of almost disappointing. Like, I'll go to the newest trailer for the newest movie coming out. Yeah. And I will say, I think... When I look I mean, back on the the, pad, the last two, yeah. this one's caught my attention the most. But I almost feel like it's too late to kind of go back. You know yeah, I mean? and it's the last one, and they're just kind of squeezing it out. Like, it's probably going to be terrible, but I'm still going to see it because I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. Yeah. But I don't know if you've seen the CG movies. There's two of them. There's uh, Degeneration and Damnation. 
I did not. I've heard of them. Um, and I've seen them, but I... Degeneration is pretty boring. Like it's it's not bad. It's just boring. Like nothing happens. But Damnation is the best Resident Evil movie. I own it. I'll bring in the Blu-ray. I'll let you borrow it. Um, but like this movie. So this was done. I think the script was turned in in 1998 because I think the first game came out or like around that time. I know it takes place in 98, but I'm pretty sure it came out like a few years before. So they, they, yeah, they asked Romero to make the scripts, and he turned in this, which it's a little too faithful. Like, I understand what they're saying, because, like, literally reading it, parts of it feel like a video game. Right. Because he includes the things like the giant plant and the giant snake and, you know, the tyrant and all that stuff. And some of it's really great. Like, the, the tyrants, all that stuff, that's all done really well. But literally, the snake and the plant battle happen, like, back to back. And yeah, as I'm yeah, reading yeah. this, I'm like, this feels like a video game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, it definitely had that. But I feel like, I don't know. I, I I imagine that these kind of scripts go through constant filters where one person gets past the script. They take a look at it, kind of change things, and keeps going to the point where when it's finally set in stone, it's just a completely different movie. And yeah. I feel like, I mean... I, when I was reading this, I was trying to play it out in my head to the best of my ability. You know, yeah. I was trying to Is this it. the first time you've read a script? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was, um, you know, I was, it's still kind of new to me, but I... And this one is, like, as I was reading it, it's kind of hard to follow because, like, when you, when you get your headlines, like, interior, hallway, blah, 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 he seems to have a very specific map of this mansion in his head, and you're trying to follow it, and it's getting kind of confusing the best thing to do is this is kind of a first one to read as, as a hard one to read as your first script. Right. I will say that. So I and, definitely had to go back and reread some parts. Yeah. And there were I, definitely some parts. Where I'm like, wait a minute, where am I again? And I'd kind of go up a few paragraphs and right. try to, it, it's, it's a little difficult. Mm-hmm. And, um, a lot of scripts aren't really like that. Like some of the other ones I've read, like, uh, me and Zis read the one for Batman and that one's all pretty easy to follow. Cause it's very vague. This one is really particular about the environments right. and stuff like that. And yeah. it gets a little confusing. But um, just to bring it back to the beginning and compare it to the game, first of all, all of your characters are there. Mm-hmm. You got all of your main characters, yeah, your Chris, Chris, Jill, Wesker, and then even, like, the team members. But it's a little different. Like, they're not part of the police force like they were in the games. They're kind of like a mercenary group, and Chris isn't part of them. Right, right, right. And you kind of sense that tension between um, Wesker and... Uh... And Chris, yeah. Whereas, on. yeah, they don't like each other. Whereas in the game, they're all they're all buddies. They've yeah. all like veterans together, basically. Mm-hmm. And in this, Chris is just kind of out of that. And he, the mansion they get stuck in, he knows it because they played there as kids or whatever. And I, I mean, I'll take it. It's it's a little different. It's it's fine. I think the change. Like, I don't think he needs to be part of the team, but it is kind of weird. Oh, and they make him Indian. I don't know if you caught on to that. They like. I did not. There, there's a. I'm pretty sure they throw a slur his way where they call him a mohawk or something like that. I, yeah, I did read that. I wasn't sure. If yeah, it was like a. That's the way he looked. Or if that was a, in the very beginning. Slur. They they say he is of Indian descent, and that's why he's watching the Hawks and like in the very beginning, which is very forgettable by the end because it really doesn't matter to the yeah, the really story at all. Add up to the end, but um, no, I. Yeah, it is a weird kind of twist to put onto it. But, you know, it wasn't something that really bugged me, you know. I um, No, I mean, that's a minor character change. It's like, I, I don't understand why you did it, but it's something I'm willing to go along with. Right. I mean, it makes sense, too, when you start looking towards the end and you start reading the end. Um, why they're more of, like, a mercenary team than working for... Um, well, I'm Umbrella. Just, yeah, I'm still yeah. in a stoner moment. <laughs> um, yeah, and I... I don't know. Like I said, the one thing I kind of regret going back and looking at this is like I almost wish that I would have watched the first Resident Evil, maybe the second one, and then watched and then read the script. And I feel like I would have been able to uh, have an exact idea of what I liked because there, there are some parts of the, the original yeah. film that I like that I wish. I mean, I like parts of the. F- I'm trying to remember what the fifth movie even is. Is this new one the sixth one? I think I was saying six earlier, so. but I think this new one is the sixth one. I feel like it is. Yeah, yeah so I think so. Six. Yeah, I, I think so. Track. Four and five. So it was Retribution was the most recent one. That yeah, one I've I thought was com- that one. it's it's the worst. Like as a Resident Evil fan, I was so offended as the movie goes on. Like they're literally throwing in stuff from the games and like name dropping hardcore and not explaining anything. Isn't it? Doesn't it seem kind of like? It's really it's it's kind of ass backwards when you look at a lot of horror movies and games and, and remakes and everything because yeah. you look at you look at people who 
don't have a lot of original ideas or try to make things their own. It's like everybody's making remakes and taking video games yeah. and making them into movies. And it's like they took the original – like the movies that we have seen in theaters. It's like they took that and instead of keeping it more traditional to the story in the game, they tried to make it their own. Yeah. Which they could have done a whole separate film. Yeah. And that's one that that's exactly how I felt about it. It's like why do you have to make it your own and like if you want to have all these ideas, put them in a different movie. Right. It's like, like you're hired to make the like Uncharted is a video game that they've been trying to make a movie of for years and they hired David O. Russell, who's a great writer and a director, made Silver Linings Playbook and all that stuff. Three Kings, a bunch of great movies. He wrote an Uncharted movie that they were really unhappy with, which I have the script of, and it'll be a future episode, where he it was like he cast Mark Wahlberg as the main character, who I think is just very poor casting. Yeah, and sure. then it was going to be like Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci, and a cut like it. They were he was totally taking. He was just a, going through all his favorite actors. Yeah, list he was basically parties. making National Treasure, and they're like Sony just stepped in and said, "No, you're Joe fired." Joe Pesci, man. Yeah, I, I can't even remember who oh. he was going to be. But they they just stepped in like yeah you're fired and like this is totally deviating from the games yeah. and and I'm glad somebody finally did that because nobody did that with Resident Evil right because yeah none of like the second movie is the only one that even closely resembles one of the games that was I, you know and I will say even Silent Hill too I for some reason yeah. enjoyed the second one more than the first one I, I like both Evil the Silent, Silent Hill movies Hill. like because the Silent Hill two follows the game like I think the first one first Silent Hill is technically a better movie. But the second one follows the game better, so I kind of like that one a little more as well. Yeah, and I also thought like uh, it was a lot more creepy and eerie. Like for me as yeah. a horror fan, like that's what I look for. You know, like when I was yeah. young, when I was young and I played Resident Evil Two, I was at an age where I got scared by shit like that. You know? What yeah. I mean? And now, I remember playing both of those games and seeing they're like I was probably like ten when those games were out, and I was like scared as fuck. Like I was watching my brother play the first one and just the music in the first one. Like like to this day, Moonlight Sonata is the creepiest song to me because there's the scene in the first game where you play that song on the piano, and I still think it's that song creeps me the fuck out. Yeah, and I I think about like God, I, don't, I can't even think about how many years it was when I first played it, but now I'm almost thirty years old, and it's like. It's not impossible to grow with the product. And I, all I wanted was just some kind of sense of fear. And I feel like yeah. I got that from reading the script. I kind of felt more... Yeah, there's... In this movie, there's, like, people dying, like, right. left and right. Like, people are getting chewed on by zombies or killed by plants. In the other movies, like, aside, like the first one, there's only, like, one survivor in the movie or whatever. But then she's invincible in every other movie. Mm -hmm. There's never, like, a fear for her life. And in this one, there's people dying constantly. She's almost like Ripley from... Uh... Alien. Yeah. And then they just start but then they give her, her superpowers. <laughs> start cloning her. She turns into a fucking Marvel superhero and shit. Yeah, it's that's, ridiculous. That's where I've lost it. You know, I feel like I think that's why this is all really cool. I, I think anybody who's listening, I take, I highly recommend reading the script because if you're, especially if you're a horror fan and a Resident Evil fan, like you get something from it that you don't from any of the other films. You yeah, know? A, a Resident Evil fan should 100% read this. Like, I can see why it didn't get made. It's it's very cliche, especially for 1998, where, like, two of the characters, Aiken and Sullivan, are completely comic relief. Mm -hmm. All they do is talk to each other and kind of quit back and forth. And then when one dies, the other one's like, like he gets eaten by the snake or something. And they <laughs> cut open the snake's stomach, and he's still alive in there, which is actually a cool scene. And he's like, oh, just let me die. Aiken always said I should have died anyway or whatever. Like, it's very stereotypical. But you go back and watch the first Resident Evil game, it's a, like a B movie. Like the dialogue is so cheesy, and yeah. you, it's hard to tell if it was on purpose or if it was just a happy accident. Mm -hmm. But like literally, there's lines like "Oh, you were almost a Jill sandwich" and stuff that became famous from that game. And the script definitely captures that feel. And it's hard to tell if it's on purpose or again just a happy accident. You know, I, it being George Romero, I wouldn't be surprised if it was purposely done. You know, because that's just kind of the way he is. Part of me would want to say it's on purpose, but then I watch some of his newer movies like Survival of the Dead and stuff, and I'm like, maybe this guy is just out of touch or something. You, you know, it's you also got to keep in mind that's the dude who fucking founded zombies. Yeah, and then oh, he's the master. Yeah, hands and down. then and then you have all these people make their own fucking zombie movies and just completely like take away the meaning and just 
flip everything yeah. upside down, and then you got to take what you created that's come, that's been passed yeah. around to fucking hundreds all, of people and make it your own. It's it's kind of hard. Yeah, you know? and all of his movies are very different. Like Dawn of the Dead is very different from Night of the Living Dead and Day of the Dead. Mm-hmm. And like people, I, I guess people hated. I've actually been reviewing, uh, not reviewing, but uh, looking into Day of the Dead a little bit because that's the one I've seen the least. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those movies that like a lot of people didn't like back then that now appreciate it much more. Mm-hmm. And like some people now say it's the best one of his original like three. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, at the time he would have been the perfect choice for something like this. Cause there was nobody making zombie movies like this. No, I think if they would have done it at that time, even if they would have taken some of his ideas that, that were a little kind of goofy and a little close, too close to the video game and just kind of niche them out and be like, Hey, you know, we're taking this out, but we do like the basic concept. I feel like his main concept was more true to what the fans wanted than yeah. what we really got in the end. Cause like, um, yeah. Cause when you look at. When you look at the, the script and just, like, the layout, you get all of the basic plot elements. Like, you get the dogs in the beginning, they go into the mansion, and they're in the mansion for a long time, and then they go to the laboratory. In the first movie that came out, they're in the mansion for 13 seconds, and then they're dragged down to a laboratory. Yeah. And, like... And this thing, I love the mansion. Like, yeah. It was probably the, one of the most fun parts of exploring in the game. So it's like when you got gypped in it in the original movie, it was kind of like... It's almost like making... Um, an Evil Dead movie, and ten minutes of it is in the fucking cabin. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. it's almost like you just feel like, God damn it. Yeah, like it. Oh, it opens in the cabin. They're like, all right, we're leaving now, and then yeah. they never see it again. Let's go to the suburbs. Yeah, and that's exactly what that first movie was like. And that, like, to me, that was a huge problem because yeah, you spend ninety percent of that game in the mansion, and then yeah, the rest of it is in the lab. But that's like maybe ten percent of the game. Right. Um. But yeah, and um. They make the mansion feel creepy, and like there's, it's clearly kind of dark and dusty and stuff. It's got a different history in the movie. Like the game gives it this like deep, especially like when they did the remake or whatever for the GameCube, which is, in my opinion, the best Resident Evil game. Um, they they give the mansion like a history, like oh it was built by this guy for the head of Umbrella, and he. Like, the guy who wanted it built was super fucking crazy, so they had all these traps and shit built into it, which this movie features traps, like... Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Out the ass, like, you know, kind of ridiculous. why I was a little bit confused, because I didn't play the GameCube version, so I didn't know about the full backstory. There's, like, some of it in the PlayStation version, but in the GameCube version, they add this whole subplot of, like, the guy who built the mansion, they, like, kidnapped his family and experimented on him, and you end up fighting his daughter as, like, a boss. She's, like, this crazy unkillable monster and you like eventually convince her to kill herself i can't remember what it is but uh yeah they add a lot more into it in the game mm. and this movie and something that the paul ws anderson movies really fuck up in my opinion is umbrella in general like umbrella is this corporation they're out in the public light and they're like a pharmaceutical company and then behind the scenes they're funding military and research and all this stuff and that's that's how it is in the games but in the games, it was never, like, a secret. Like, after they blow up Raccoon City in Resident Evil 3... It's out in the open. Yeah, it's out in the open. Like, Resident Evil 4 starts with, like, oh, yeah, this happened. Their company went bankrupt because everybody found out all the fucking illicit shit they were doing. And then in the movies that are out now, it's all about, like, ooh, Umbrella's secret, and they're, like, still doing their experiments. But, like, it doesn't make any sense because in the movies now, the world is fucking ended. It's an apocalypse. Why do they care about trying to kill survivors? Yeah, what, at this point, finding all this shit, it's not it's, – yeah, it's stupid. It's, yeah, that's, like – That's the reason why I think I'm so, like, detached from this current Resident Evil series. Like, I almost wish – this new one wasn't coming out, and I wish it would just yeah. give it in the hands of somebody who has a fresh new idea. Because yeah, I'm hoping is- they reboot after this. Honestly, I would love to see them reboot the franchise, stay a little closer to the games, or maybe try something completely different and borrow the name. But like, I would love to see them try to do at least one of the games for real. What they need to realize with the Resident Evil franchise is it's horror, dude. Like yeah. that's what it is. Like even with the late, one of the latest games, I know that they. The, that the games have definitely scene. kind of gone a little more action as well. Like, 5 yeah. and 6 were more action, but 5 still had plenty of horror. Like, 6 less so, but there were still moments. But I, I just remember, I, I forgot, I don't even know if it's the, the last one that came out or if it's, I feel like I'm so behind, but um, I remember reading in, in some kind of game website or something that they were making Resident Evil and they were bringing a lot more horror back to it. And it's yeah, like, there's a new one coming out that is like, it's a first person game and it's supposed to be like way more horror. Like, so they've been doing like six and five are both pretty hardcore action games. 
they did do like a spin off series called Resident Evil Revelations. And honestly, if you haven't played a I Resident Evil one. game for a while, yeah, Resident Evil Revelations 2, which came out like last year, I think, is probably the best Resident Evil game they've made since 4. So I would highly recommend that one anybody to anyone, any Resident Evil fan. It, it stars Claire and Barry. So they bring back some characters and they introduce like Barry's daughter and some mm-hmm. other stuff. It's it's great. I played through it last year and I loved it. I'm going to play through it again. That one I would actually recommend. Six was a real mixed bag. Everybody hated six. The six one I kind of liked a, it. A multiplayer or co-op. Five was the first one that you could Five do co-op, was, okay, but you could do co-op in six as well. And it had six had three different campaigns, and there was just some really weird gameplay shit they fucked with that like made it kind of weird, hard to play. Mm-hmm. Like it was really easy to get confused, and like some of the action wasn't that great, and the story is really not that great. Like it feels very standalone. It doesn't carry on the story that much. Um, but like I, I still like six, but they are putting a new one out like January or February, like really early next year. Right. It's Resident Evil seven and they put out a demo and it's all first person. It's like, they're kind of completely starting fresh with the story. Mm. So there's no real, like we don't know much about it yet cause it hasn't come out. They're Is using, there any kind of no, they put out a the demo, past? but it's just like, you're just in this house and like the kind of synopsis is like uh, some guys in the South looking for his daughter. And it's actually kind of inspired by uh, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and stuff like that. Oh, nice. So like the house you're in in the demo is very, it's like if the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house was like run down, which it, I mean, it kind of it is, kind of was, but, yeah. but it's like if nobody was living there. Right. So they're definitely going for that kind of vibe and they've put out some gameplay stuff. It's still kind of up in the air on what it's going to be. I hope it's great. I'm going to play it because it has Resident Evil in the name. Sure. But the the funny thing they're actually doing is in Japan, the series is called Biohazard. It's not called Resident Evil. So in America, they're calling it Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. And in Japan, they're calling it Biohazard 7 Resident Evil. Oh, so okay. they're like kind of bringing it together yeah, yeah, yeah. finally. So that that's kind of funny. That's cool. I mean, the thing is, I almost feel like the same reason some of the games is kind of with the games and the movie itself, they've kind of gone astray and kind of lost people because you lose that horror aspect yeah fucking evil is in the name i mean like it should yeah the thing is like there's certain things that that you can you can kind of experiment with and do things like that like bioshock like, if you're yeah. a bioshock movie you can you can make it horror you can make it more sci-fi do whatever yeah. but resident evil it's 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 pretty like, like you said blood. evil is in the fucking name yeah and, and these movies have never been scary to me i mean it, it probably takes a lot to scare guys like us anyway because we yeah. watch this shit anyway yeah but um yeah i mean but it's, none almost, of... it's almost like res, like ash versus evil dead yeah if sam raimi would have did this whole tv show and took it from a nothing but a like a total different approach and didn't have like that whole horror feel or that kind of campy like goofy you know pun one-liner shit with Bruce yeah. Campbell. Like, people would be like, what the fuck is this? Like, I get it. I get it. We're in 2016. Yeah. You got to step it up. You got to do new things because we're in an era where people are so easily, I guess, bored. Yeah. You know, you got to kind of have to do new things to kind of make people pay attention. But it's like, with certain things, when you're making a movie for Resident Evil, what you have to realize is you don't have to think about ways to get people to want to watch it. It has a fucking fan base. Yeah, it Everybody, has an like people are going to see those Resident Evil movies have all made upwards of 150 million dollars each. Like they do really well at the box office, which is why there's been so many of them. Yeah, and and they I, make them for like 30 million or something, so yeah. they're all hugely profitable. And I mean, I I don't know, man. I, I I just can't really. I'm trying to think of the way the best way to put it. But when I watch these Resident Evil movies, it doesn't feel like a Resident Evil movie. Like if you no. would have given it a whole different name. And you, you would know, never even know. But fuck Island part one through seven. Like I would have been like, oh, this is, you know, but fuck Island. Hell yeah. Like this yeah. is cool. I'd watch this. But when you put Resident Evil, it's like, God damn, like it's, it's, it's almost two different completely. Like, yeah. I don't like know. you can't you, just put a zombie in it and call it Resident Evil and expect people to relate to it. Yeah. I feel like, like I even get lost you, in it. Like even Ash versus Evil Dead, like you were talking about, that show is predominantly a comedy, but when they want to turn on the horror, they do it really well. Like mm-hmm. the last two episodes of the first season, there was a lot of fucking freaky shit in that episode. Mm-hmm. Those like little kids and shit. Like it was, it's, you have to fucking pull that in if you're trying to make a horror story. And like, I, I listen to the DVD com. I don't know if you ever listen to DVD commentaries. I would highly recommend listening to the commentaries for at least the first three Resident Evil movies. Mm. For one, they're hilarious because they're it's like the first one is the director and then Mila Jovovich and Michelle Rodriguez, and the, and I think the producer Jeremy Bolt. I think he's in most of them. 
they're just kind of like bullshitting and like joking about the movie. But I mean, you you learn interesting things, but you kind of see where Paul W. Under, Paul W. S. Anderson. There's too many fucking Paul Anderson directors. It's all these initials. Yeah. Well, it's because there's the Paul Thomas Anderson. There's I think oh, there's yeah. a Paul Anderson, then Paul W. S. Fucking Anderson. Um, I would love to have a conversation with this guy because he just doesn't get it. Like I would put so much money on the table just be like let me talk to this guy like yeah. seriously like it's fucking private conversation never has to see the light of day just so i can be like what the fuck are you thinking with these movies i feel like the first uh, when they were looking for a director or somebody to, to write that movie the first question they should ask is have you played the games because i, I, I mean, feel like that's he, one thing they skipped but he play. made the most successful video game movie at the time which was the first mortal Kombat movie i mean i think to- tomb raider for a long time was the most successful i think they came out yeah, around the same year isn't it isn't it kind of like from Kind of going off on a side note, but what you just said, the first movie, video game adaption movie that he made was Mortal Kombat. Yeah, and, and it was I great. I feel like I that was that way harder to make into a movie than yeah. Resident Evil because there's you're less making... story in a fighting game right. than there is it's in a just, fucking there's single There's no fucking player. health bars in the movie. You have yeah. to really make the movie a movie. Yeah. And, and that he movie did it. was great. And it was awesome. Yeah. So it's like when you have a, like a game like Resident Evil, which is basically all like story a fucking movie it's it's yeah. a movie you just gotta you know take out some of the cheeky shit some of the fucking corny jokes and make it a horror movie like it's so much easier to do that when you have that full layout you know yeah and um it's crazy because like exactly i didn't know i didn't even know that the guy who did resident evil did mortal Kombat. but yeah. looking back on it it's you, like, it blows your fucking mind when you, yeah because like how does he go from that to that and he also did event horizon which is another horror movie oh yeah I've seen that. which is decent i we watched yeah, it here yeah. at the office not too long ago um uh, if, getting back to the script, um, yeah, what I was talking about before is like there's a, there is a heavy emphasis on these secret guys in Washington. Like they keep popping up throughout the script, and it's just like Resident Evil was never that. Like in the first game, it was like oh keep it a secret, blah blah blah. But in the in the second game, it's like oh a whole city just got yeah fucking we fucking wiped know what's out. going on. Yeah, yeah, and then by Resident Evil three, the military is bombing the city. It's not Umbrella like it was in the movie. It was the fucking army, like the president's, like hey blow up that shit because this is out of control, mm-hmm. and then Umbrella goes under. And th- yeah, that's one thing. I mean, I guess in the first one it would be okay, but like going on, that's just something that never happened in the games. Yeah, it's almost like. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think of a good good way to kind of put it like that. It's like it's almost like taking a horror movie or, or taking any movie with the, with a killer who nobody knows who it is, unmasking the killer and then putting the mask back on. The next movie is like who is it? It's like dude, yeah. we fucking we've established that. Let's Only get Scream past that. can do that. Yeah, Scream. Yeah, absolutely. But it's like you know I don't know. I even think with like the Hunters and the Tyrant, like they almost yeah. were built to be a lot more intimidating in this script than I would have imagined them being in yeah. the series now. Yeah, and fucking, if you put them in the movie now, somebody would jump kick one in the face and break its neck. But in this, yeah, in, like, in the game, like, when the hunters first appear, because I think in the game it's like you go from the mansion to, like, this little outhouse place, and then you come back, and the hunters are there, and, like, you hear their footsteps as they're mm-hmm. walking around. And even in the script, they talk about you hear their footsteps and their metal claws, and they sound fucking scary. Yeah, and I, you know when I was reading that, I was I couldn't help but like, um, just imagine aliens. You yeah, know, like in, in that movie where you're watching and you just feel the intensity. You don't yeah. see anything, but you just feel the yeah. tension. And to get that, like that's what I think any fucking Resident Evil fan wants. They just want yeah. that feeling because that's how you felt when you had the lights off and you're playing and you're walking up to a door yeah. and you knew that there were walkers on the other end. You know, yeah. and and I mean I guess that's kind of the struggle with a Resident Evil movie because it's not just zombies. There's like all these other kind of mo- crazy monsters. Realistically, don't you think if uh <laughs> I almost feel like the series that's going on now, the Resident Evil is so cartoonish that like I mean, they'll cram them in if they have. I'm surprised they haven't crammed in Hunters actually. That's yeah, literally I was one of the say, only I, Wouldn't they look like Croc from a uh, fucking Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah, they like, kind of would. I feel like they would look very Yeah, they look like the lizard. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, they're, they're supposed to be, like, more gorilla-shaped. But, like, literally in the movies, he crams in the most random fucking monsters that nobody cares. Like, the Axe Man from fucking Resident Evil 5. Like, who cares about that shit? Yeah, they... I don't know. Uh, yeah, and that's another thing with I was going to talk about earlier with uh, the, the last Resident Evil movie. Is, like, in Resident Evil 4, it wasn't the T-virus anymore. It was these parasites called Las Plagas. And in the movie, Michelle Rodriguez injects something into her neck, and the Leon Kennedy actor says, it's the Las Plagas. And they never fucking tell you what that is. It's put in there only for fans. If anybody 
didn't fucking play every Resident Evil game, they wouldn't know what that is. And at that point, I was just so angry. Like, uh, you know, the, the, I feel like it, it makes me want to watch the last one, but it's again, a fucking train wreck. Again, it's like I've been avoiding that purposely not to yeah. watch it. You know, and I was I, watching some clips of it on YouTube recently, just because like something got brought up about it recently, and I wanted to refresh. So I kind of pulled up a clip on YouTube, and it's fucking worse than I remember. Yeah, and I'm, it's like. I'm There's, torn. like, so many clones in the movie, too. Like, they literally bring back, like, the whole team from the first movie as clones. And it's just like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's, it. that's what I'm saying. It, se- it seems just very recycled, you know? And it got, like, yeah. they were just losing ideas, but they needed the paycheck. And, if, and at this point, if the world is fucking overrun with zombies and you can make clones, why aren't you just cloning an army to take back the world? And, like, who cares what the fuck anybody else is doing? If you take back the world with a clone army, you own everybody in the world. Right, so. right. And, you know, but... Of course, most most fucking movies have big whole plots like that, but it's just like I've been lost with that series in general, and um, it's almost like a bittersweet reading this script because like yeah. at the end of it, 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 it's almost like a bummer that it didn't get made, even though it yeah. was kind of cheesy. What fucking horror movie isn't? Yeah, you know? and it 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 definitely falls in line with the movies he had done before. Like Day of the Dead is a pretty fucking cheesy movie, but it's also fucking scary. Like I remember the first time I watched Day of the Dead, and it freaked me out. But then, yeah, you got these, like, a zombie fucking saluting and shit. But isn't it crazy, like, to think that they never even introduced Hunters in, like, the series now? Yeah, there's a lot of things. they were such a big part of this script. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like, once it hits, like, the third act, they're everywhere. Yeah. Like, there's a whole scene where they're stuck in a hallway and they're just coming at them. And they're like... And, uh, but apparently they change them a little bit where they add, like, metal plates in their heads, yeah. like, when they're yeah, so, born. Yeah, because at first they, didn't, they thought it was just, an, like, a fucking lizard, and they shot yeah. it, and they're like, is that a metal skull or Yeah, so or? they start taking out the limbs, like, that's where they're weak, which is interesting. Like, yeah. it adds a little fucking depth to them. And what's nice is, like, every monster that gets introduced gets at least one kill. Like, the hunters kill somebody, the snake kills somebody, like the wrestling, plant kills you know? somebody. Like you gotta get your fucking finisher in, you gotta put yeah. you over. Yeah, but it makes <laughs> them feel threatening. Like, has a zombie dog, and oh, I guess the zombie dog in Resident Evil did kill somebody. But they introduce a lot of movie, or a lot of monsters in the movies that have never fucking done anything. They're just there to be part of the game, and then, just, like... Just to kind of sort of please yeah fans. like oh hey you remember this from the game here it is in the movie hey we're gonna give you four seconds of that in the commercial so you can think that you're really getting what's yeah true to game i remember when i saw the commercial for the fourth movie and i was like oh man this looks fucking dope like those other ones kind of suck but maybe this one will be great and it was nope. just a fucking shit show and that was the first 3d one so it's a lot of throw stuff at the screen i hate that i hate when they make a movie for 3d instead of just making the movie 3d yeah you know like i don't need the shit to pop out yeah like dr strange just, yeah so good yeah, 3D, but it wasn't like one of those things where you just keep seeing them throw stuff at the screen, yeah. you know? Like, like I just... saw Prometheus in 3D, and that was fucking awesome, because yeah. it's very subtle. Like, it's a lot of yeah. scenes where they're walking through caves and stuff, and just, like, the depth of the cave was in your eyes, and, like, this movie, it's just like, here's some shurikens coming at your face, because yeah, that's what we yeah. need in our zombie movie. Yeah, and, um... This this script has, straight up has a fucking guy in a dark mansion and laboratory wearing sunglasses, which is exactly what it should have been. Yeah. And then they add the whole fucking he's got a bomb in his ear thing, which to me seemed really impractical. Yeah, I mean, and considering it was so easy to just kind of smack him in the fucking yeah, ear. Yeah, like he it. introduces it, and then literally I think a zombie almost knocks it out of his ear immediately. Yeah, it's it almost seemed like a joke. Like when I was reading it, I, I thought there was going to be more to it or something. Yeah, but I when mean, I it comes realized... back at the end. But yeah, literally he introduces it, and then like something happens, and like two like two pages later, it's almost knocked out of his ear. And even in the end when they bring it back in a Jill knocks it off or grabs it yeah it's like it's like oh it's, now you have 15 oh, minutes so, so that easy yeah that easy you know like something that's, that's that fucking detrimental to fucking the world <laughs> or, or that area fucking yeah. imploding from the inside and it's, it's just, just it's a just fucking hanging out it's just a fucking bluetooth yeah that's it um one thing that me and this talked about in our batman episode is there were no scenes reading the script that felt like they would have stood out on the screen like oh here you remember that fucking scene from like Batman where the bat burst through the window and shit, which was like a big scene from the comic book that wasn't in the script. But this, I feel like there are a couple moments that I'd be like, Oh, that would have been like a cool thing. Like the reveal of the tyrant, I think is explained. Well, um, the, like the first zombie kind of appearance is done fairly well. Um, I think the first death from a zombie were like, just kind of like, even, even the ending, I feel like has a slight, like, yeah, they, it was very, it was pretty tastefully done where, where the zombie, wasn't dead, you know, kind of yeah. like a typical horror movie where the, the zombie was yeah. so fucking drooling and, and yeah, because like 
at the end they blow up the mansion and then they also say it blows up the city which kind of negates resident evil 2 at all but uh yeah they show you because like earlier in the script uh, like one of chris's farm hands or whatever like mm-hmm. one of his buddies is uh like killed by a dog and then they they show that after the explosion happens like oh he's shambling around the farm as a zombie and then he gets blown up and they show the city, and for some reason there's zombies in the city, even though they never mentioned it ever escaping to the city. And then they get blown up, but one's still alive. Yeah. Like, Yeah, you know, that is true. You know, when I was thinking about it, I, I didn't really think about it that way. I almost feel like I should probably reread that. But, it's not explained. Like, I mean, No, I mean, like in the sense that if there was any parts of the script that oh, really that, like, stood out as like a you know standout scene or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, then again, a lot of the magic happens when it is captured, you know? Because yeah. I almost feel like... If you were to read, I keep bringing up at, like Evil Dead and stuff. But like, if you were to bring up, or, or you were to just read the script in, in Evil Dead Two, where Ash's hand was fucking infected and he grabbed the chainsaw and took it off. Yeah, like reading I mean, it, it sounds awesome, but I feel like it's not as iconic as when, as you, when actually you actually see fucking it. see it and you see the blood just hit his face like yeah. that classic. And the thing with Romero is we have a point of reference. He's mm-hmm. made a ton of zombie movies. Right, right, so right. we can look at something like – I go to Day of the Dead a lot because that's his like – as far as when this movie was made, it would have been his most recent one. So that's more reflective of what it probably would have looked like. Because to me, Day of the Dead I think is the most like graphic looking and like – like yeah, it's more like dark and scary. Like it's the most horror looking movie. Right. And, yeah, I could easily have seen that translated into this script. Like, mm-hmm. I read it, and I can picture these dark woods and picture these, like, zombie dogs and all this, which are very present in the beginning of this right, script. Right. Um, and I, I can I can kind of vision it through what his movies looked like at the time. Yeah, and I almost feel like um, the ships kind of sailed, but if they would have given George Romero the script, and even if they, like I said earlier, like, would have told him, hey, take out some of the corniness, like, let's... It is super true to game. Yeah. Let's take some of that out, but let's keep the main gist of this in the film. Yeah. Especially at that time when he wrote it, he was at his peak of ideas. And I feel like at that time, zombies weren't so mainstream as they are now. No, that not at all. It would have left more of an impact than the original Resident Evil did, opposed to if he were to come back and do it now. And now it's to the point where zombies are fucking everything even yeah. kids cartoons and shit where it's just like yeah. it's kind of the point where they're, they're on tv every week where i'm like one of the most popular shows on television right. and they're done better there than they're going to be done in this fucking resident evil movie that comes out in a few months right so it's almost like it, it literally is it's like i guess a few months when we're recording this is probably going to post around the time that movie comes out yeah, so. yeah. but i mean it's it, it's it's kind of thing where like they fucking waited too late like now what can you really do with Resident Evil? Like, you have to keep it true to what it is, but at the same time, you have to do something new with it because people have seen zombies. Like, people are fucking... I mean, I love zombies, but I'm almost sick of them. Yeah. You know? Because, like, like, that's... Kind of the only zombie stuff I still get into is, like, The Walking Dead, where it's done well and stuff like that. But even that show's not so much about the zombies. It's right, about like, the people. Or, I, you know, like, are people who are like, I hate horror movies, but I love zombies. And I'm just like, yeah. that makes me cringe. Like, really, yeah. you, if you can't watch somebody, like, if you can't watch full-on gore, but you can watch zombies yeah. kill, like, it just goes to show that it's just it's just mainstream, you know? And, like... Resident Evil is such a cool concept that I feel like it deserves the justice yeah. of being done. For me, what makes a good horror movie is like a kind of depending on which way I'm coming from. Like for more like mystical or fucking supernatural shit, I want like some deep story lore stuff. But like story is an important part of me or for me for, for horror movies, and it's why I don't get into a lot of slasher movies except like the really high level ones. Like Halloween, obviously, is. Mm-hmm. Amazing. I like the Scream movies because the way they poke at the kind of slasher. Yeah, yeah. making fun of the horror yeah. slasher shit. And, like, I, to me, I just need, like, a story. And Resident Evil is so full of story. It has mm-hmm. great characters. Like, some of my favorite characters come from Resident Evil games. Yeah. Like, Leon S. Kennedy has I gone on Leon. to become a fucking crazy action star. Like, in, uh, that's why I think you'll love the CG movies because Leon stars in all of them. Uh, again, the first one's kind of boring. I have them both if you want to borrow them both, but... But Damnation is the one to watch. I That's a, no, I would yeah, definitely take you up on it, that. One. That one's great. I, I'll I'll try to remember to bring it. Um, but yeah, like there's so many great characters, like such a good deep story that spans multiple games. You have a lot to pull in there. Mm. I think you could go back and reboot and kind of do the first game. And if you're a little more true to it, you could like everything's about a connected universe now. You could really set up those other movies with everything we know now. Because I mean. The first five games have pretty much wrapped up that story, and everything after that is kind of extra. Yeah, and I almost feel like 
maybe it's just me. I'm not trying to be sexist because, like, I don't get me wrong. Like, I love badass chicks in movies and stuff yeah. like that. And I love the Evil Dead remake, you know. And, yeah, um, that's one of my favorite horror movies in yeah, the past, like, ten years. Fucking, you know, she killed it. Every people people were talking shit. Oh well, you know, where's Ash or where's I mean, yeah. the guy figure? But like, she killed it. Jane yeah. Levy killed it in Evil Dead. Yeah, and, that movie was fucking great. When you think about Evil Dead, two like besides Jill Valentine, two of the characters that really stick out in my head is Chris Redfield and Leon. Yeah, and it's like I almost feel like their presence really do lack in these films. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, they, Chris appeared in the fourth movie, played by Wentworth Miller, yeah. who, who did a fine job, and Leon com- appears in the fifth one and is like doesn't even matter to the plot. Like, and that's what I'm saying. Like it's almost like you take you, you took. Two of the most like important characters in the series. Yeah, and, and Wesker, just, I would throw up there as because like, he's he's a villain though. He's not like yeah. the main character, but he's the most iconic character in that whole franchise. I would say. And I, I just feel like, the, what are your priorities? Like, what who's going? I almost feel like the person who's doing this and, and making all these decisions is somebody who's maybe watched somebody play part of yeah. the first game. You know, because it almost seems like there's certain things that that should be key. Yeah, and. It's not like on top of everything being lost and her fucking riding the Matrix motorcycle and all this crazy yeah. shit. And like it's, 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 it just boils down to these movies are more action than horror. And like I understand the, you know, empower women, make them main characters. That's great. That's fine. But Resident Evil has a whole string of characters that were completely thrown out for this one badass chick. And it's like the best way to put it, if you really want to um, it brings back to wrestling. <laughs> if you really want to build a new character in a series like Resident yeah. Evil, you still need to keep the beneficial characters because you can. Yeah, in, in, and they, in they throw terms, them in once in a while. Like yeah, Jill was in a important. couple of them. Yeah, Jill was in the second movie, and then she comes back in the fifth movie, and I think at the end of the fourth one, she has a little cameo. And yeah, all the game characters are there to either be killed like they are in the games or not. Like Barry, they put him in the fifth movie and he dies. Barry has never died in the series. And like, I don't know, they pick some of the most random actors to play them. And I mean, Jill was kind of the only one that got her due diligence. Mm -hmm. And like, they kind of recreated Resident Evil 2 and 3 with the second movie. And that's why I kind of like that one the most because it's Mm -hmm. the one that's the most like the games. Even though it's, that one is a straight up action movie. Like that she's running down the side of a building for Christ's sake. And they included the nemesis, which is mm. one of I, most... That was one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Like, just the way he looked and... Yeah, just... and th- they made him look good in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I was actually looking on eBay. They're selling, like, a bust of the head for, like, $200. But I'm sure it looks cooler, right? But it's all white. It's not painted or anything. Uh, but okay, it's okay. still pretty cool. Yeah. It'd be like having a statue of it on, like, a pillar. Then I'd be lazy if I had to fucking, like, paint it. Yeah. But no, but I like, think it was one they used for the movies, though. The way I view it is, like, you, you can't take away Leon and Chris, like... No. Build them up to be fucking characters that are, I don't know, I feel like they, they lost their meaning in the series of the movies. Yeah. And if you're going to bring a new character and make her the head of it. You, Which is like, Jill, she's a main character in this movie, but along with Chris. And right. And they have Rebecca. They have literally every named character from that first game is in the movie. Yeah, like but, not, get, but not, not. Or in the script, I should say. I feel like. Their importance in the game was completely ignored in these movies. Yeah, and I feel like if you're gonna build a new character and make her the fucking center, again wrestling terms, use the main characters of the fucking game to quote unquote get her over. Yeah, you know what I mean, like you got to make these characters seem important. Yeah. Otherwise, what the fuck are you making? Yeah. And when you take a look at Resident Evil Apocalypse, when they bring in Jill, there's a big chunk of the movie where they're separated. Like. Mm-hmm. They don't really interact together until like the end of the movie, or they kind of meet up and then they split up to go do two different things. Like, oh, we're gonna go to the school and find this girl, and then we're gonna do whatever over here. And they're just badass on their own. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't really cooperate or help each other that much. Right. Um. Yeah. I mean, in this movie, it's it's like all teamwork. You get this team that goes into the mansion, which is the fucking story of the game, and like shit goes bad. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but like, I was reading towards like the middle, and, like. The- Towards the end, when the hunters all come out and shit, it started in my head. I was picturing uh, Doom, the movie. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. The like, first person, yeah, section. when shit starts hitting yeah. the fan, and all these like you know, the main dude ends up being a fucking crooked piece of shit. The Rock yeah. and it just some something about it. I was just envisioning it. Like, That's to, another to movie like that. I like, but if they would change the name, would be a lot better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I mean, I think <laughs> the part where the dude ends up coming back and kicking ass, like yeah. I, I, I seen that movie in theaters, and I remember I, did too. 
I remember being like, you know what? It wasn't bad. But I, yeah, like, I'm when like, you really watch it as a movie. I'm like, it wasn't Doom, but it wasn't bad. <laughs> yeah. like I. It's, it's one of those movies I kind of pull out on Halloween. To me, it's like the perfect Halloween movie. It's that and Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, the two yeah, movies yeah. I kind of pull out around Halloween time, and I love watching. Yeah, and you know, I almost wish that Resident Evil could be one of those fucking movies because I yeah. do. I I recently just watched um, Silent Hill uh, a few weeks ago, and I watched Silent Hill two again. Yeah, and it's like I wish I had that joy in watching the Resident Evil movies. But you know what? After talking to you, I do feel like I need to go back and watch some of the. Other I ones. like when I was reading this, I kind of wanted to go back and rewatch because the first three, I think, all have. I think the third one's the best. Like out of all of them, the second one is the one I probably like the most because it's the one closest to the game, so it's just a little closer to my heart. But three, I think, is the best made movie. It's the only one that's kind of gory. It's it takes things in a different direction, so they're kind of free to do what they want because the apocalypse never fucking happens in Resident Evil. But in the movies, they went there, and I'm like, all right, fine, whatever, do something different. And I think the third one, it's got a great score. It's got some decent characters, a good villain. I think the third one is probably the best of the movies. But now, like, we live in a world post Walking Dead, and I don't know how you keep making these kind of movies right right so saying like it's like where do you go from here like you have to do something that kind of makes you stand out and it's like yeah and if that's matrix case, action isn't gonna cut it anymore no no it didn't really it's cut like, it then you got to take your key characters and you got to fucking build on them like i mean it's with anything you know whether it's sports or whatever it is you take something and you build it to make it better and yeah. i feel like you have so much foundation in the Resident Evil story, whether it be characters or villains or environments, you know, like the, the mansion that, that you can just build off of and make something new with it while keeping yeah. the same old feel. But it's just a matter I mean, of will they do it? People go to see video game movies because they want to see their favorite video games translated to the screen. They don't want to see something completely different. George Romero wrote something that was very close but still a little different. I think change it up a little bit like it's really campy in the dialogue sometimes like tone it down a little bit mm-hmm. but i think this could have been a excuse me a great fucking movie yeah no i feel like this had like if you were to take the skeleton of this fucking movie yeah and add you know add more to it it would have been a lot more successful and yeah because he's, more... he's got all the elements like maybe take out the fucking plant take out the snake or keep one of them right um but you got the zombies and the hunters and the dogs there's tons of fucking monsters in here that are here messing dudes up and it works for the most part. Like, there's a lot of fucking campy dialogues, but they have two characters that, like I said, are just fucking comic relief, basically. Yeah. But even that, I'm okay with a little bit. Like, yeah, I it doesn't have to be like completely it... serious all the time. Yeah, I mean, and then the part where I think it was uh, Wesker kind of puts him in place, it's like, no, yeah. kind of fucking joke. Yeah, shit, shit like that, where it's like they acknowledge the fact that these characters are put in yeah. the story for that reason. But another thing, like I think you had mentioned earlier, the cool part about this script, regardless of all the little campy feelings and all the kind of you know corny shit here and there, it felt like a team. It felt yeah. like an actual team going into this fucking completely blindsided, not yeah. knowing what they're getting themselves into, and then being in it and being like, holy fuck, what yeah. are we going to do? And that's what it should have been, and that's yeah. what it was. I mean, it's a little cliche, but this was written in 1998. Cliches were fucking not as This was common. groundbreaking for being in yeah. 1998, you know what I mean? Like People yeah. were like, what the fuck? Like, this is- and it, it feels a little first drafty. Like There's definitely some moments with Wesker in particular where he kind of like – Flip flops mm-hmm. a little bit on his intentions, and yeah. it's just kind of like, what is this guy doing? He seems way more of a dick yeah. in the end. But I feel like you could turn in this draft and then make a second one that could have been the perfect Resident Evil movie. Right, right. Like just subtract a little, mix up a little, and you got it. Right. It's like almost thinking of a fucking song that's actually pretty good, but still needs some adjustments, and then be like, you know what? I'm gonna scrap it and make a whole new one. Chances are you're yeah. gonna make a song that's not as good. <laughs> That only needed a few adjustments, and instead he just came out with a brand new bag of shit. You know, yeah. and like I'm not saying the Resident Evil's a bag of shit. I'm just saying no. that it's when you look, it almost feels very lazy. You know, and um, I don't know. And you, you, you're probably the biggest like Resident Evil fan that I know. So it's like when you give your own review or, or, or interpretation of the movie, and you say, "Oh, well, this one sucks." I take your word for sure. You know, like yeah. like most people. Watch it for enjoyment. You know, like you watch it because you're general. Like you're you're a full on fucking a Resident fan. Evil fan. Like you know? I love. I take in everything Resident Evil. I went as a zombie for Halloween one year, not because of zombie movies, but because of Resident Evil. Yeah, and that's the same thing with like 
I have friends who come up to me, whether it's about Tex Chainsaw or like any kind of remakes, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Fucking when Ash vs. Evil Dead came on the TV show the first season, people were like, did you like it? Did you like it? I'm like, yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, you're the one I would go to for Evil Dead stuff because you're like a huge Sam Raimi fan. Yeah, and it's like, you know, I don't know. it's, It's weird because some of these movies, like when we brought up how many video games and movies, video game movies, excuse me, I can't talk. (laughs) <laughs> like we're put into film and the ball was completely dropped you know and it's I mean, like there's I don't a know lot of curse them. i don't know if it's like a hard job I mean, to do but so like tomb raider made a lot of money and that was the highest grossing one until prince of persia came out which then be it wasn't like hugely successful but it was successful not like 250 million or something like that but that movie had like a huge like 200 million dollar budget so it wasn't like that successful this is uh, uh jake gyllenhaal right yeah yeah, I Which I that. like that movie because I think it's an okay action movie. I don't believe um, I ever seen it, but I do remember when I worked at Fantasy Costumes, we had an overstock of uh, yeah, of there was Prince of Persia vests or yeah. some shit like that. It's it's all right. Like it it sticks close enough to the games, and Alfred Molina is in there totally stealing the show. Is this weird fucking character? He's it's worth watching for him alone. But um, yeah, I mean there's like Max Payne was one I was super fucking excited for, and that movie turned into like the biggest piece of shit. And that that is probably the game that is the most like a movie that should have been the easiest fucking thing to make because it's just like a hard boiled revenge story. Like there's yeah. so many movies that already exist like that. Shit, if you want to watch a really good movie, if you want to pretend that this movie was the movie for Max Payne, you should watch the movie Death Sentence with Death Kevin Sentence? Bacon. Kevin Bacon. I feel like I've heard of it. It is fucking fantastic. I'm gonna look it up. It's a Lionsgate uh, film movie, and Kevin Bacon. It's, it's it's the revenge film, and Kevin yeah. Bacon is like the ultimate badass. Like shaves his head, looks like a compl- like I can't even explain it. Like when it comes down to it, you especially if you like revenge yeah. films, it's I, so I, well I love put a together. good like shoot 'em up revenge movie. Yeah, that's, and that's what Max Payne could have been. Because Max Payne again, one of my all time favorite video games. Like if I was gonna tell you my top three all time favorite video games, it would be Metal Gear Solid, Max Payne, and Resident Evil Two in that order. Yeah. So. You know what? If um if I can kind of rub a certain game that I think is kind of like our generation's Resident Evil now, The Evil Within was probably my favorite fucking horror game. Which I haven't played, but The Evil Within was actually made by the guy who uh, directed Resident Evil 4, the game. Oh, really? So, yeah, it actually has Resident Evil caliber, like, working on it. Like he, That's awesome. He, I think he did the story, and, like, you know, he, he the director of the game, like, he came up with everything. Yeah, you can definitely tell. There's there's definitely, I'm um, like... And that, that's what I heard. It was very reminiscent of Resident Evil much, 4. It's a Resident Evil, yeah. but it's... That's it. And that's another movie where, like, if somebody decides... It's another game where if someone decides they want to make a movie out of it, there's so many it's gotta good be parts horror. good story that it doesn't have to be completely fucking different like don't don't try to take the ball and run with it just say true to it yeah. and i think a lot more people would be happy you know yeah but it, it was really interesting to see george romero's take on this movie because if there's anybody whose input you'd want to know yeah want to see it's the guy who fucking created these monsters yeah the one reality. that and the, i mean it resident evil is very much taking inspiration from the romero movies mm-hmm like you look at Night of the Living Dead and Resident Evil, it's they're trapped in a fucking house with zombies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, is there anything else you want to say about the movie? I mean, overall, it's 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 a hard script to read just because of the way he wrote it. But I think he had a lot of the elements there, and like one more pass could have really nailed this movie. No, absolutely. I, like if if there was a second draft of this, I would fucking read it in a heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. And I think another thing that I think is really cool is that he tried to keep the characters. He tried to build the characters, not try yeah. to create his own. And I yeah. think that's important, especially when you're like your making... main characters are the main characters from the video game. Right. It's, you know, you can't you can't create something that's already been established and try to change it completely and not expect people to be like what the fuck, you yeah. know? Like it's it's granted, but I mean, like you said, I think perfectly put if they had one more shot at rewriting it and just you know kind of pulling loose ends and kind of you know crossing their t's and dotting their eyes and just taking out all the shit and you know trying to make it as tight of a script as possible they would have nailed it especially yeah with george romero's mind i feel like the zombies would have had more justice and i think it would have had a more creepy feel which i'm just a fan of movies like that in general like i'd yeah. rather be I like, love, there's literally just monsters popping out of everywhere in this movie, and it's, there would have been like so many jump scares and shit. Right, and I, I mean, like I don't. I'm at a point where I watch these movies and I don't like expect to shit my pants or anything. No, you know? 
But I I can think of like one movie in the last ten years that like legitimately made me feel like any kind of uncomfortable, and it wasn't because it was like scary. It was because it was the Babadook. I don't know if you've seen the Babadook, oh, yeah. but it wasn't because it was scary. It was because the, like the relationship between the the mom and the kid Son. it was very fucking tense, and I'm like something bad's gonna happen here. Like is she yeah. gonna hurt this fucking kid? Yeah. And it just made me really uncomfortable. But like. That's the only thing. I wasn't like scared. I was like, ooh, can't turn but off the lights. But sometimes that uncomfortable feeling is yeah. just as like, I don't want to say satisfying because it makes you seem like a sadistic freak. Yeah. But it is. It's just yeah, satisfying. I mean, there's a reason people watch horror movies. And I don't get that feeling from the Resident Evil movies that exist. But this one at the time, it probably would have been pretty fucking scary. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, they would have had a lot more success with this. And it would have been a lot more... It would have had a lot more to uh, bounce off of when it comes down to, you know, whether yeah. it be part two, part three, part four. You yeah. know, I think they would have been able to run with it a little more. Um, but on that note, I do know that we do have plans on another future podcast where we will be talking about The Crow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Rob Zombie's The Crow. That's another one I'm super fucking stoked to yeah, read. Yeah, I'm going to start reading that one real um, soon. That one seems a little easier, too, to read. Um, yeah, is it? I haven't... I mean, he... I don't know if you ever listened to him on the Nerdist podcast with Chris Hardwick. Him and Chris Hardwick are actually like really good friends. Yeah, yeah. he was in House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah, too. and um, he's been on his podcast three times. He actually just had a new one come out, I assume, to promote 31. Mm. And um, on his second one I listened to, they, they talk about his screenwriting process. And he's just like, really? yeah, I don't know. It's not that hard. Just two pages a day. You're done in 50 days. And like, Yeah, that's... you know, this thing about Rob Zombie, it almost feels like, I don't know if this dude really puts a lot of effort into his things because whenever he talks about it, he just makes it seem like it's yeah, so half-assed. Like, it's like, yeah. so easy. Like, even with 31, it's like, so how'd you write it? Like, people were really intrigued. Like, how'd you come about this idea? He's like, oh, you know, I just... People but... are afraid of clowns. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, you know, you don't know if, like, is that dude just that fucking, like talented that he can just yeah. fart out ideas and it's like holy shit or is he getting to a point in his career where he's like just, just like saying, yeah whatever whatever sticks whatever works but the cool part is that this fucking script that you sent me for the crow was written at a time where he was still a, a fucking starving director where he was yeah. he this wanted was, i don't remember was this like early this like 2000s or something towards, like yeah, that? Yeah. and it was like when right did the first movie corpses. come out? Like, when did House of a Thousand Corpses come out? I, I want to say two, around 2000, 2001. Yeah. I think, um, I think but the movie was made years before that. And he was yeah, that's right. There was a whole... They, they, I think they talk about that on one of the Chris Hardwick podcasts. Mm-hmm. So I, I'd have to double check and look as far as like when it was filmed originally. Yeah. But I do know that that Crow um, script was written at a time where he was really trying to get his name and he, trying to get his foot in the door as far as yeah. the acting goes. So, you know, he was really trying to fucking... Yeah, and I'm really excited to read that one because I don't really know anything about it. I just kind of stumbled upon that one. Did you so watch, I... like, the original Crows? Or... Oh, I, the, the Crow is one of my favorite movies, yeah. the first one. We watched it, actually, in the back. The Brandon Lee is the Crow, dude. Like, that's yeah. why I, no, it's it almost great. like it's heartbreaking for me to even watch anything past that because Brandon Lee has, like, pulls... Yeah. It's a close place in your heart when you watch him. You yeah. Know? I mean, that was a movie I kind of stumbled upon like at my dad's. Like A lot of my movie stories start like this. It was like a movie my dad just had on VHS, and I just like I would go there every other weekend because they were divorced, so I'd spend weekends at my dad's. And I would just like watch a bunch of movies there. And it's like, oh, what's this movie? And just throw it in. The Crow I've probably watched like a million times. Yeah, because it's just... like even if you don't like horror, it's like a fucking su- – almost like yeah, a it's dark like a good superhero story. movie. You know, in like a weird, dark yeah. way. But yeah, on that note, um, I appreciate you having me on here. It yeah, was no awesome. I, I highly like recommend. While we're um, here? Yeah, for for those who are <laughs> horror movie fans, um, I have a horror apparel line called uh, The Cryptic Closet. Um, you can follow us on Instagram or on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash The Cryptic Closet. Um, we have a few new designs up. We have a... Ghostbuster pin that we just posted up. That one's great. Um, instead I saw of the that. ghosts, it's a picture of a. Uh, it's Patrick Swayze as the Ghostbusters logo. Um, yeah, and a few other things. So feel free to check it out. Once again, it's uh, facebook.com slash cryptic closet, or you can go on Instagram. It's at the cryptic closet. Do you guys have a Twitter or just the Instagram um, right now? You know, just the Instagram right now. You know, I kind of, I'm kind of lost with Twitter. I almost feel yeah. like I should pay. Someone to do Twitter, <laughs> but I... Uh, it, yeah. it becomes a lot. I do I do Twitter for this show, which you can follow at at shelved pod. I, I, at shelved podcast, sorry. And then uh, we have we also have our email, shelvedpodcast at gmail.com if anybody wants to email the show. But I, 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 I'm I like trying to run the shelved Twitter and mine at the same time. It's kind of like, I'm like, oh, I should probably flip over and post something. It, it gets a little 
rough. Yeah, and then I'm sure it annoys people when you link all of them together and you send the yeah. post and it posts the same thing in all of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I'm trying to do them separate right now, but it's like I, at the current time I don't have a lot to post. But once the episodes start going up, and I'm trying to do everything at once, and I'm also trying to like build anticipation like oh here's what i'm reading script wise kind of stuff it, it gets a little overwhelming yeah it's baby steps yeah you know, I, I just had fucking danny trejo post uh the picture i saw of, that that was of, fucking cool yeah one of my pins the alkaline trio and it's the alkaline trio logo with danny trejo yeah that was fucking awesome i totally forgot to say something to you about yeah, that yeah yeah so i that saw was, that over um, the weekend that you know it's little things like that where i don't even have twitter or anything like that because i'm not really i feel like i don't have enough shit to post to where yeah. it's really beneficial but um yeah we have You'll We're get trying that. to get a presence going on Instagram. Same with you yeah. guys. And um, I look forward to coming back and talking about The Crow. And, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to that one. Some more shit. So once All again, right. thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, man, no problem. Thanks for coming.